Hey guys, it's Shadow Heed here. How's everyone doing today? So, for today's video, we are going to be taking an in depth look at the new and improved Forge in Halo 3 on MCC. So, as you guys have probably seen by now, Halo 3 has finally come to MCC PC. It's currently on the um, Insider version of MCC PC, so it's kind of like in a beta phase right now. But, the new Forge mode is available now, and a selection of maps are available for us to test it as well. Now, in a previous video, I did show you guys some of the new stuff in the uh, Insider build of Halo 3, but for the most part, I kind of glossed over a lot of the new features in Forge. So, we'll be doing a much more in-depth look at all that for today's video. Starting with the new keyboard and mouse controls. So, a lot of people did ask me about more details about these controls in the previous video. So, let's start off with taking a look at what the controls are in general. So I'll be letting you guys, uh, you know, without like sp speeding it up or anything, you guys can take a look at the uh, default controls. Uh, but Forge does fully support uh, keyboard and mouse now. And you can see these are all the default controls available. Now, of course, you are totally free to change these controls, you know, rebind them to whatever you want, whatever's convenient for you. And of course, you still have access to the controller controls as well. You just got to plug in the controller and then up, just use the controls you're, you've always been used to on the Xbox version of MCC. But yeah, so hopefully you guys uh, got a good look at all the new controls now. That's what you can expect for the default controls in Forge. Now, moving right along, Forge on certain maps now has a vastly increased budget and object limit for a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to be using Sandbox as an example for this one. Uh, but the big three. Sandbox, Avalanche, and Foundry all have increased budgets and object limits. You know, back in the day, uh, budgets and object limits, they were a huge limiting factor for what you could do with ma maps. There were a few glitches to, to get like infinite money and stuff like that, and to get past the object limit, but it was kind of a hassle. And now that limit is gone, and you know, if you delete every object on a map, like on Sandbox for example, you can see like what the new increased budget is. Uh, it seems to be around $4,500 if you look in the bottom right corner there. Whereas back in the day on the original Halo 3 and you know uh, very recently MCC Halo 3, uh, the object limit was around $1,500 I think compared to $4,500 now. So that's a huge increase. And with that, a lot of objects also have their limits increased as well, uh, including like vehicles, scenery objects. Uh, I don't remember the exact limits back in the day. But now you could spawn like 16 of each vehicle, which is a lot. And back in the day, you would very quickly hit that limit just by spawning like a few. But now, you know, with these increased object limits, you could build a lot of crazy stuff in Forge on Halo 3. Which, in my opinion, was actually one of the best um, Forge modes. Even, in, even better in some ways than the newer Forge modes. Uh, something about Halo 3's like Forge, you know, it's, it's simplicity and just how fun it was. I, I kind of preferred it that way. And now, you know, with these increased object limits, you could have quite a few um, crazy maps. <laughs> and, you know, like 16 Banshees, you could have like a whole like big team Banshee battle or something in custom games. And of course, other stuff like scenery, like walls, barricades, floors and stuff like that. They all have been increased to 50 for uh, the object limit. So that's a, that's a lot, and you can now, with that huge limit, you can build really huge structures and complex uh, stuff as well. Now this next one, this is a pretty good improvement as well. Uh, forge controls from Reach, such as orbiting, are now part of Halo 3, for better or for worse. And, I'll explain, and you'll see what I mean by that uh, in very soon. But now, when you spawn objects in Halo 3, the way you move them around and move around them is exactly like in Halo Reach now. It's basically been backported from Reach. However, there were ups and downs to that. Uh, now, it, it's more like the object is controlling you rather than you controlling the object. And because of that, it, it's very easy to get like pushed out of the map or pushed into death barriers. And you know, you, you basically die a lot as a result, just like on Halo Reach. And I, I personally never actually liked this uh, method, but I know for Forgers it is a very powerful new uh, control. But back in OG Halo 3, when you move around, the object would also move, not you with the object, if you guys remember. So that's, that's my personal opinion though, but it is, I do believe it is technically better. <laughs> 
this next one is going to be like a huge thing for a lot of people as well. Uh, so back in the day, you know, Halo 3 objects were very solid and um, putting them down, you know, they they might tip over a lot sometimes because they don't, a lot of objects don't even have fixed physics and, you know, just, it, it's hard to like stack them and stuff. But now, you do have the option to change the physics to like fixed, phase, or normal. Oh, and there goes the, uh, the, the orbit thing again that I don't like with Halo Reach controls. But yeah, with phased, you can now, you know, literally phase objects through each other. Uh, and or, or through like the map itself. And with that, you could do a lot of uh, crazy stuff. Back in the day, just to like do this setup here, you, you see like phasing two objects, this would actually be kind of tedious and take a, a little bit, uh, like much longer than what you just saw there. But now with just a simple setting change, you can now phase objects together. And of course you can also set them to fixed, which uh, lets them float. And for, um, you know, non-scenery objects, setting them to fixed physics, like a vehicle, will also keep them in place as well. Not just floating, of course, but like totally in place. And, you know, these three, uh, and of course you can also set it back to normal as well. So these three things, it's a really huge improvement and something like, you know, it would have been great to have back in the day in Halo 3 as well. Would have saved a lot of time with building complex maps. Now this next one is the new special tools menu. When holding an object, you just press three on a keyboard. I don't exactly know what it is on controller, but it's a glitch where it keeps popping up on a controller randomly, which you probably saw uh, in the last uh, clip that I was showing you guys. But anyways, the new special tools gets, gets you a much more precise uh, editing of the position of an object. It's currently a little buggy because like the position that you set doesn't, doesn't save. And the minute you switch to something else, it just changes back to what it was before. But when it does work, uh, you can see the potential it has. You could fine tune it very perfectly. Because back in the day, with um, if you use the controller to adjust it, it was really hard to get like a perfect angle. Especially if you just wanted like a 45 degree or 90 degree angle. Even that was just really hard to do without like rotation snap. Which actually does work from the menu. But the other stuff does not quite work yet but so it's still a work in progress because like I said as of as of the uh, making of this video it, MCC uh, Halo 3 is only on MCC Insider so it's still in beta and you know no doubt the, the, all this stuff will be like fixed by the time the game releases uh, so the special tools menu should be working by then but yeah but at, at least you can see what it's gonna what it's gonna basically look like when it does work and how useful it will be now the next one, this is what a lot of people have been waiting for as well. There's been a lot of new objects added to uh, pretty much every map, but mainly the big three, which as I mentioned earlier was Sandbox, Avalanche, and Foundry. So on these maps, a lot of scenery objects and vehicles have been added to the, to the uh, Forge palettes. And yeah, um, I'll just show you all of them now so you can get an idea. I'm not going to describe each one because, you know, that would really drag out the video and uh, a lot of them are really self-explanatory what they are but basically a lot of the new objects were added from other maps like in the case of sandbox you got a lot of objects from avalanche i think some of these crates are from uh, uh probably citadel i think but uh, other objects are basically universal across some maps so can't exactly tell like which objects are from which but some are pretty obvious like that thing there was from a, uh, the map assembly this dinghy here is from Longshore, Soccer Balls from Foundry, or possibly like another map. And these doors, I think they're also from uh, from like Ghost Town and probably like Longshore as well. But basically, scenery objects from other maps are now brought onto uh, Sandbox, as well as other vehicles. So the new vehicles on Sandbox, like the Shade Turret, the Elephant is like the most notable one. and. You know, forgeable elephants have been like a dream since like OG Halo 3 and always need like a modern map or something like that. But now you don't need modern maps anymore. Uh, other stuff from campaign were added as well, like this uh, broken warthog with the working turret. That's from the mission The Ark when you play on solo. And of course you saw this troop transport warthog. Uh, new equipment was added to each map as well. Uh, but just two things, the auto turret and spanker ammo, which is for uh, rocket launchers. Now the, uh, the auto turret it's also from campaign, and I'll show you what it does in a second, but the auto turret, it's only on a couple campaign missions, and right now it doesn't quite work properly on Forge, uh, as in the turret turns against you the moment you spawn it, and 
yeah, it's very deadly, and yeah, it also counts as a suicide if you um if you uh, get killed by your own auto turret, even though it's an enemy to you. So yeah, but I'm sure that'll also be fixed by the time the uh, final version of the game comes out. And no new weapons right at the sandbox. So that's it for the new stuff added. Next up, we got Avalanche. On Avalanche, just like Sandbox, uh, you know, the forge budget and object limits were increased, but of course, new scenery objects were added as well. So, starting with the double box here, and let's continue on. These boxes were obviously from the map Foundry, and uh, up th these are unique to Avalanche as well, as far as like new objects go. Obviously, they were on Foundry still. But sandbox doesn't have these. There, there is no single map where everything was added to it. Each, each of the big three, they had their own unique objects from other maps added to them. So you won't have, you know, the same. Ob Some objects will overlap, but there will still be unique ones, such as, um, you know, like like all the foundry stuff. But some will overlap, such as these uh, stuff from uh, Citadel and Assembly. But yeah, overall, a lot of. Uh, a lot of cool stuff have been added and you know basically all these new objects without needing to mod the game you can <laughs> the forge potential has been like increased like a thousand fold there's like so much stuff you could do now with all these new objects as well as the new like physics and forge controls so i'm definitely excited to see what people uh, can create but yeah so next up we got vehicles on avalanche just like sandbox we get the elephant once again forgeable we also have the AA Wraith from Campaign as well, and the same Warthogs from Campaign, and the Shade Turret. And of course we have the regular Hornet as well, which was never added. And this one is odd. I actually, apparently the the, Gauss, the Snow Gauss Hog is added to Avalanche, and I never realized there actually wasn't a Snow Gauss Hog. At least I don't think there was, but the, the place it was put on the list implies that it was new, so... Apparently that's, uh, that's a new vehicle, and there never was a Snow variant of the Gauss Hog before. It, apparently, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm just remembering wrong. And it, for some reason, it was moved to the wrong spot on the list. But that's just what it seems like. Uh, equipment's the same, and the only new weapons added are the plasma rifles. Uh, yeah, that's right. The plasma rifles were never on the map sandbox to begin with, <laughs> but now they are. So next up, we got Foundry. This is the last of the big three that got a lot of stuff added to it and an increased uh, forge budget and object limit. Uh, but yeah, so let's take a look. Starting with scenery again. So starting with uh, the first new scenery object added is uh, this con long container here, which I think is from the map uh, Longshore, because these next several objects definitely are from Longshore, so seems to fit the theme there. But then uh, eventually we do move on to objects from other maps. I believe these are from Orbital, so definitely uh, unique there. And then these doors are the same and we also got a few other stuff that's shared with other maps as well. You can pretty much find like all the golf stuff from each map. The disappointing thing though is that the, the tin cup, you know, like the, the golf thing there with the flag. If you guys remember, that flag is not OG. Uh, on OG Halo 3, that flag is actually like a triangular and has like a grunt face on it. But for some reason, ever since MCC came out, uh, aside from like other things that were broken with the golf stuff, like the yellow golf ball, um, the flag was never fixed. The, the golf ball was fixed, but not the uh, flag. And so was the, the golf club. There were issues with that too. But the flag remains the red square. It was never fixed to the uh, what it was OG. But anyways, I mean, it's, it's not a huge deal, but it would be nice to see the OG one come back eventually. Um, hopefully you guys all remember that flag as well, because uh, that's the best I can describe it. But anyways. Uh, for the first time, Foundry also adds those uh, visual effects as well. But as you saw in my uh, previous video, which is like glossed over the new stuff, uh, stacking those effects doesn't quite work too well on Foundry for some reason. As it, as not as well as it does on other maps. Uh, but yeah, new vehicles. Uh, no elephant. Map's probably too small for that anyways. But it does add a scorpion tank, which surprisingly was never on it. Uh, even though the Wraith was. But the other new vehicles are basically the same. Uh, equipment is also the same. With the new ones at least. Uh... No, no new weapons though. Uh, so that's basically the weapon palette remains the same. Now that's the big three, which got a lot of scenery and vehicle objects added to it, and some new weapons as well. But what about other maps? 
So, not every other map is uh, in here on the Insider build, but basically all the other maps, including most likely the ones that aren't featured yet, uh, a lot of them have stuff added to them as well. Namely, uh, weapons. Weapons that were never on them before. Like, weapons that you could spawn with through custom game settings, but weapons that you couldn't forge on the map. You know, like with Avalanche, like the Plasma Rifle, you couldn't forge that previously, but now you can. Well, on Construct, for example, you can now forge a Fuel Rod Gun, which you couldn't before. Uh, Guardian, no new weapons. Apparently, Guardian already had all the weapons on it beforehand, so there's, there was no missing weapons to add to the Forge Palette. It was weird, like, Bungie didn't, like, simply put every single weapon on all the maps to begin with. Like, I don't know why, like, some maps didn't have certain weapons. Like, on uh, Last Resort here, you got the Fuel Rod, Sentinel Beam, and Mauler that are now available to forge, which weren't before. And I have no idea, like, what reason there would be to not have those forgeable. <laughs> Same with uh, Narrows. Uh, there's only one new weapon added to Narrows, uh, which is the Carbine. I don't know why the carbine wouldn't be forgeable on this map. You could you could spawn with it on that map with custom game settings, but not forge for some reason. Uh, and sand trap, quite a few weapons here that were never forgeable, <laughs> which is really weird because like sand trap seems to be like the forge map back in the day, but unfortunately it was missing quite a few weapons. And unfortunately it did not get like the big, it did not join the big three and getting like a huge uh, scenery and vehicle stuff added to it, including forgeable elephants. Which I feel like Sand Trap should have been like one of the maps to get it, but unfortunately it wasn't. But anyways, um, the pit only has the carbine added. And Valhalla here is a weird one. Um, it does have new stuff added to it, but for some reason there's a bug here where the Sentinel Beam was added twice. Which actually threw me off because I was going by like the last weapon on the list from like the OG games. So when I saw the Sentinel Beam there, I thought the Fuel Rod Gun was the only weapon added. But then I scrolled up a little bit and saw there was the other Sentinel Beam. And then all these other weapons, like the uh, the carbine and the plasma rifle, they were also newly added to uh, Valhalla. But it did kind of confuse me at first. So that's definitely a bug where there's two sentinel beams in the weapon palette now. And hopefully that does get fixed. Uh, it's not a big deal though, you just have double the sentinel beams you could spawn, I guess. Uh, worst case scenario. But yeah, so that's, that's basically it for Valhalla. This map only has one new weapon, which is the plasma rifle. And that's basically it. Uh, if you for the for the maps that weren't including insider build, if you want to tell like if the weapon's new or not, rule of thumb is that uh, the weapon at the bottom of the list is usually uh, a sentinel beam or a two-handed weapon like a flamethrower or a missile pod. One of those three weapons are usually the last on the list in the OG maps. So here you can see on Heretic, the sentinel beam's the last weapon on there. There's nothing else under it, so no new weapons were added to Heretic. That map pretty much had all the weapons already. So in the future, when the full game comes out, if you want to see uh, which maps also have new weapons added to them that I didn't show in this video, then that's basically how you can tell. That's basically the rule of thumb. Just look at the, what the uh, look for like the Sentinel Beam or a Missile Pod or Flamethrower, and then anything under that is going to be new. But yeah, so that's basically all the new stuff added, and that's what the new and improved Forge is like on Halo 3 on MCC PC. Overall, it's a really great update. A lot of huge improvements, really powerful tools and settings available now. And I'm definitely really excited to see uh, what people can make with the new Forge on Halo 3. But yeah, that about wraps it up for this video. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video and found it to be interesting and helpful too. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. Any anything else we can check out looking to you, any questions you have, just let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely do my best to uh, get around to it. But other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all next time. Bye guys!